with that again. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed. So there's a falling away involved. And popular Christianity will always teach that that is yet to come. That's probably going to be a short time, a few years, towards the end of time. And I'm saying, and I'm proposing that it has been going on for hundreds of years, not thousands, probably about 1,600 years. Right about that amount of time. 15 or 1,600 years has that, that spirit of the son of perdition been in the world who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. He opposes and exalts himself. That sounds like a, like a contradiction. How can you oppose yourself and exalt yourself? above all that is called God, which is just God. So if you say you're God, that's opposing yourself. It's exalting yourself, but to exalt yourself is to oppose yourself. That's to destroy yourself, to lift yourself up. That's why idolatry is so evil, because all idolatry ultimately lifts oneself up. And why I've always had a problem with making more than one person out of God. Because, by definition, if God is more than one person, the real God is the worshiper. Because the worshiper chooses which of these three God people he or she will commune with, communicate with, talk to, listen to, at any given time. The person who is determining which God person you will speak to is the actual God. If the definition of a God is the one who has sovereignty. That is a sovereign act you make. When you decide, I will now speak to Jesus. I will now speak to the Father. I will now speak to the Holy Spirit. That is making you God. That is the essence of idolatry. That is opposing and exalting yourself. And you are supposedly the temple of God. I'm not saying you aren't. I'm not saying that one who is the temple of God can't believe in the Trinity. I, I question it. I have a hard time believing it. But this would seem to indicate that he dwells within that temple. That the son of perdition, the spirit of destruction, destruction himself, can actually, can actually dwell within us in that sense. Not as in you are devil possessed if you believe in the Trinity, but you are speaking on behalf of the son of perdition. His words come out of your mouth. You may have the spirit of Christ dwelling within you, if indeed you are the temple of God, which means that's true. And he will not leave you nor forsake you. That's why I'm putting this out here as kind of a question to try to figure out, as I'm trying to figure it out. Because this is a huge thing, as in, this is crucial to understand. Can... The temple of God, those filled with the Spirit of God, speak the words of destruction, of the Son of Destruction. Well, it's one or the other. Either everyone who believes in that lie, that God is three people, are all going to destruction, or some of them at least are the temple of God who are believing a lie. And he is showing himself to be God in that temple by declaring the Trinity to be true. By telling people that it is true through God's people.